What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. And I am delighted to be joined by legend of the fight game on the island of Ireland, Norman Park, uh, before his fight at Hexagon MMA 7 coming up here on March the 11th. Norman, thank you very much for joining me today. How are things? I'm good, Paul. How are you? I'm not too bad. No, I, I can't complain. It's a, a big time for uh, for Irish MMA. And when I heard your fight being announced as well, it was it was it was good to see it. I was actually looking through your record there, and uh, you've had seven fights since the start of the pandemic, which is very unusual. I think a lot of people were struggling for fights and weren't able to get in fights, and now they haven't all been MMA. They've been boxing and different things. It must be great for you to get be able to get that many fights in in a time where a lot of people weren't able to. Well, I think the first fight of the pandemic was the one where um, <clears throat> the one I shouldn't talk about most was the one against Gamrot, the third fight, and um, it didn't really go too well that fight. The fight was a stoppage, so um, maybe if I could rewind the time back, I could uh, I could change some things, but it is what it is. And but yeah, <clears throat> not too many people got to fight during the pandemic, and uh, I think it was July twenty twenty that fight was and. And then after that, there was a wee break, and then I went to the Fame MMA after the KSW. So, yeah, I've been staying pretty active, and I hope this year I can uh, hope this year I can get about four fights. I want to fight about four times this year. It's it's been kind of funny because like you were in the UFC, you were, had a couple of fights in KSW and Bellator in in Ireland, and then it seems like you've become almost a Polish MMA fighter over the last few years, and you pop up with these big fights, and we kind of see you be putting out tweets and uh, Instagrams in Polish and all this. How is that? That must have been a mad scene for you to get involved in all that. How's that been? I uh, know. Well, it first started with the first first with KSW. I was there two thousand seventeen. That was the national stadium show on KSW, and that was my first introduction to the Polish scene. And I never realised it was so big as it was, but it's got bigger as you know as times went on. And uh, you know, I was dead a stint in KSW for about a few years, and then um, that came to an end. And uh, then I started a sign for this other organization in Poland, a freak fighting organization. I'm sure you followed it, Fame MMA, and I had a few fights under that organization also. And they pull really, really big crowds there. They've got a big attendances. They get big uh, social media platform, and I my eyes was quite wide open to it once uh, I'd signed for them, and it helped my popularity. Also helped me get more social media followers, which. You know, in the fight game nowadays, uh, you have to have a good social media platform to help get um, great exposure to. And uh, I've had good fights there, you know. I know some of the fights have been a wee bit, you know, uh, different weight categories and stuff like that. When I fought the Mad Rapper Popek and then I fought this other crazy guy in a small cage. And uh, But looking back on it, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um but now it's time to it's time to step away from the Polish scene and fight. Uh, this will be not actually. It'll not be my first fight outside of Poland in five years because I fought in Bulgaria, uh, two thousand twenty one near the end of the uh, twenty twenty one and a boxing match on another Polish show. But um, this will be my first, you know, proper MMA fight outside of Poland in about a few years. I, I was talking to my, my guy Sean Dini, who I know you know as well about like what's been going on in, uh, with you at the, in the Polish MMA scene over the last while because he's the best guy to go to and he gave me a, he gave me like a list of everything you've done in the last few years and I have a few questions right so the first question is what do you do when you win a gold bar what like <laughs> what what do you like go to the bank take it do you try to that pawn was, it uh, that happens? was the Polish thing that was the first fight I had because I yeah. fought one of their boys it was a boxing a former amateur boxing champion he was and he was, uh, he was like, you know, their face of their show, you know, and they wanted me to fight him and obviously boxing rules, never MMA rules. And uh, so we agreed five or five rounds yet, yeah, three minutes. And uh, I knew when I got to the decision, I thought maybe they're going to give it to the homeboy, you know, and, but the whole show's built on controversy, you know, drama. Most of the time, I'm not really too bothered about that, to be honest. But I just played along with it. You know, we got the sense of humour to play along with it, go with the flow. And uh, but hey, Fame MMA is a big promotion, very, very big promotion. They've got. Uh, we we did a fight there, and uh, when I fought this guy in a small cage, and we fought in that that big arena in Krakow, um, there was twenty four thousand people. I think was there. Now that's unbelievable. You'd never get that in uh, any of the shows around here, but. 
well, Bellator is a big show. It comes to Dublin, and uh, but I mean, like the local shows you get here is you maybe get like you know a couple of thousand people, but um, even the smaller shows in Poland they seem to pull really good crowds too. You know, maybe like about nine thousand, ten thousand people. So it's good to just get into a different market. And you know, I just fought there. I fought you know some good boys. Um, fought some freak fights, and <clears throat> some people like the style. You know, I just. I think, you know, after the UFC, where I was a wee bit more cautious when I fought in the UFC, I never really, uh, I never really let my, my game go the way I should have, you know, rather than just go into the fight and say, fuck it, let's go, let's just put on a good fight. And I feel like when I fight like that, I, it suits my style better, you know. And uh, now I'm hoping here, coming into the next fight here uh, next week, I'm just going to go in and I need to finish this boy, 100%. My frame of mind is to go in and finish this boy with I don't know which round but any any round will do me because a lot of my fights are the season so I have it in my mind I'm going in to finish him one way or another so that's the game plan anyway and the gold bar is a is, is it is it in the, the behind the a cupboard somewhere or did you get rid of it or what, where is it what happened oh it's over? long it's long gone oh, so it's, it's, like, it's long gone <laughs> fair enough fair enough there was another fight it's not the real it's not it's not the full grade you know it was, oh, was the lower grade but <laughs> <laughs> you'll take it anyway there was another fight where you had won 15 minute round against Boris Mankowski who's obviously a very very good fighter we've seen in uh, in MMA a good few times and you boxed him and that what was that like fighting you know we talk a lot about you know Joe Rogan's always saying it'd be better with no rounds and all as someone who's experienced obviously rounds and won 15 minute round like that what was that like I know looking back at that fight you know uh, I I never really did much to be honest. I didn't even I didn't go forward to win the fight. I was just kind of going through the motions, just pacing myself, and I was hoping, you know, uh, my plan was maybe when I get to the last five minutes to push the pace on him. He did all the work, scored all the points, jab one two moving, and uh, but I felt like if I should have put more pressure on, I could have won the fight or finished the fight. But I never, you know, it was Rodney wasn't in my corner because me and Reese was fighting on that same night. You know, Reese had to fight in uh, London. I think it was, I'm not too sure who he was fighting, but he was fighting a big fight in London and it was more important for Rodney to be in his corner for that fight because my fight was just like, a, you know, a boxing fight in the cage. It was not like MMA fight. And I fought Boris before in KSW and won by decision. So I thought, I'll let him win this fight so we can fight a third time and make a third fight really good. So I always says to him after the fight, I let you win that fight. So now, whenever we fight again, <laughs> it's for MMA. <laughs> yeah, that'll, be, that'll be a good one. So I, I suppose we can expect to, to, to see that one. You, you spoke about the tiny cage as well. Fighting a heavyweight in, in a tiny cage and winning that fight, dominating that fight. I remember watching it back. How, how What kind of an experience was that? Is it like someone who's, try, as you said, tried to become more exciting, I suppose, in, in more recent fights? That must have been great. Well, the fella who I was fighting was, uh, I don't know, he's former bodybuilder, used to live in the UK and stuff like that there. And then he fought against a couple of MMA boys and won by knockout, one punch knockout. And he had just, it was during my fight with Popic, you know, on that same fight card, that guy who I fought in the small cage, the one before, the show before, we uh, he came up, you know, to my face saying he wants to fight me. And someone caught it on camera. And then the owners of that promotion, Fame MMA, said, hey, we, we could make this fight because... Uh, Popic, the fight with Popic lasted 30 seconds because he broke his thumb so that wasn't even a fight I, I wouldn't even class that as a one or nothing but hey it's a one on your record but and then it was a few months later then they made that fight they just says here would you like to fight him in the small cage and I says what's the small cage <laughs> never heard of the small cage before but whenever whenever I stepped in now I realised how small it actually was <laughs> you could nearly put the hand out and touch gloves from corner to corner <laughs> but I knew once it went in there and it was a special rules fight. The first round was just striking, no grappling, no clinch, no wrestling. And once it comes to round two, then you can do MMA. Round two was MMA rules and round three was MMA rules. So uh, my game plan was just to go in and just keep the guard up tight because I know he needs to knock me out. <laughs> he needed to knock me out in the first round because once it comes to round two or round three, I'm going to finish him because he's a little heavier but not very experienced grappler at all more more a striking based fighter he is and uh, I could see he was nervous I could see and he came out heavy throwing heavy everything he threw was tense and powerful and I could feel it on my guard he never connected me really but I could feel the punches land on the guard 
So I had to make sure and keep the guard up because I don't want to get sparked out. <laughs> you would never hear the end of that if I was knocked out in that first round. So kept the guard up and then my, my punching started to come good and I could see he was just stressed. And then once round two came, I remember Rodney saying, right, watch, he's going to come out with something crazy here at the start. He's going to come out hectic, maximum, 30 seconds maximum. He's going to go crazy, so be prepared for that. And there he comes out, flying knee, swinging for the fences, and he forced me to grapple with him because I was actually going to stand and strike on the round two. And uh, he forced me to grapple, so I grabbed him, took him to the ground, and then wrestled him out a wee bit, held him, controlled him, and took the back and flattened him out, and then that was it. Game over. It was game over, but and looking back on it, I would fight in the cage, that small cage again, I would. I would do it because the the action was quick. It suited my style too. It suited my style because I like to fight in the pocket, you know. You never really see it so much in my fights in MMA because you're moving around. Some opponents will move away, hit and move away quick. So that wee small cage made a uh, force the, the more action, which I liked. So... I'm hoping maybe in the future it can happen. I can fight in a small cage again. In the short term, is it kind of back to, I suppose, normal MMA, for want of a better term? Because the last fight you had against Gregor is obviously a former uh, KSW title and challenger and a very good win for yourself there. And the fight coming up against Junior as well mm-hmm. in Hexagon, another you know legitimate, very good MMA fighter as well. Are you kind of trying to go on a run here and get back into maybe your promotion, go on a run, win a title somewhere? Or is it kind of money fight you're, you're looking for in the near future, I suppose, as well? In all honesty, I'm not too sure to be honest. I'm just going with flow. I just want to stay active. Um, some things happen in Poland, but we'll just leave it there for about a year or so. <laughs> and then you now I can fight outside. I like to fight in different countries and stuff too. I like to float about. I like to do my own thing. Like Rodney knows, I love to do my own thing. And uh, But one thing I can do, I can fight, you know. So here they offered me to fight the this the French promotion offered me to fight a, a Polish guy first <laughs> you know and I thought it was a good marketing move I thought right they want me to fight a Polish guy to keep the marketing the uh, Polish people uh, glued to the fight and and I know the Polish boy too and he didn't accept the fight I understand that's fine no problem and this guy's middleweight fighter also so I was moving up we were doing a catch weight 82 kilos and uh I says, it's fine. And then they says, okay, we'll get you someone else. And then they just come back straight away with this Brazilian guy. And I, I looked him up straight away. I know he's lost his last three fights and he's been finished in two of them. So, hey, it's got everything written on it that I need to finish the fight. You know, if I grind out a decision against this guy, I, I'll have to just uh, just go back to freak fights. <laughs> you know, I need to finish this boy. I, 100% in my mind, I just need to finish him. And but still aware, be cautious, you know, because he's got nothing to lose. He'll be looking to he'll be looking to win, you know. He's definitely looking to win the fight. But um, I feel I'm stronger everywhere than him, you know. And I know he's a BGG black belt. I n- never seen too much grappling of him on the floor. But uh, his last few fights I'd seen is more striking based guys. It's took him down and. Uh, this, the last guy was an English guy, I think it was some guy from Neil England, Brown, I don't know yeah. his name. Yeah. And uh, they grappled a bit about in the floor, you know, but he looked very tired after the first round. And uh, he was just swinging for the fences, looking to catch a, a lucky punch. But <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Good luck. I, I, I have to ask you what happened in Poland. If you don't want to say it's grand, but like you can't go back to Poland for a year. What, what's the crack? No, I was meant to. No, I can go back and fight. You know, but it was just mm. I was meant to fight on that prime MMA on uh, November. I was actually meant to fight a guy in November, but um, a lot of stuff had happened with the contract and with that. With the, the first uh, fight I had under that promotion was uh, Gregor Shulikovsky. That was the first fight last July. A lot of things happened. I didn't even want to talk about it, you know, because I talked about it enough in the Polish media. And uh, and then we came to an agreement, okay, right, I would fight in November against this guy, four and two guys, like a heavyweight guy. And I says, no problem. And there was a part of the deal that was never kept whenever I got to Poland. So and I, I knew once we started arguing with, we started arguing with each other that after I fought, I don't know if I was ever even going to be paid after the fight. So I says, forget about it. Uh, fuck it. I just left and, and, and went home. So I did. <laughs> I never fought. And, you know, it was, oh, I'm scared to fight. I'm scared to fight some guy who's got four wins and two losses. I don't think so. You know, I, I step in and fight, no problem. But that happened, you know, I just want to move on and go fight, do my thing. 
and also had this the you know the Octagon MMA promotion also yeah. Octagon MMA. I was I was lined up to fight in this tournament, and then uh, they picked the guys to the tournament. I was in the tournament, and then I wasn't in the tournament, and then but I was still speaking to the matchmaker and stuff of the organization, and. Uh, <clears throat> they they called me they called me last week and says hey would you uh, step in and replace John Hathaway because he was injured he got injured and he's out of that yeah. tournament and I says hey, you know I'd do it no problem but I don't think this French organisation will let this happen because it's not a good move either and so I asked I asked the French promotion just out of curiosity I asked them which I knew they were going to say no anyway and he says it's very risky for us we want you to fight in our organisation so he says no and the matchmaker says understood and uh, so I don't know I've signed for this one fight for this promotion Hexagon MMA this one fight and uh, I don't know what's going to happen after this fight but I want to just focus on this fight first I know there's some opportunities after the fight to go fight somewhere else but we'll see what happens after this fight my focus is just to go in and finish this boy here I need to finish this fight I want to ask you as well, I know we've obviously talked a lot about the last few years, but the years before that, uh, you know, in the UFC, you had a very good UFC career. I think when, when the UFC let you go, I think a lot of people were shocked and probably wouldn't be, you wouldn't be a fighter in 2023 that the UFC would let go if you want to put it that way. I just want to know how you're reflecting that. First of all, like the career itself, but also I saw the uh, Joseph Duffy was talking recently in an interview over to lads in the old triangle and he was saying about like how him being kind of anti-McGregor for want of a better term like put a lot of the Irish fans against him and you've kind of found yourself in that position once not, and it was down to McGregor not yourself is that something that kind of you felt hurt you that you didn't get the Irish fans behind you because it was kind of like there were McGregor fans more than Irish fans at the time and maybe that wouldn't even happen as well today did you feel that kind of at the time? No, I'm sure whenever I fought twice in Dublin that time when we fought in the first fight card the 2014 the fans were there all for me but I understood Conor was the main boy he was the main boy that the UFC wanted to market you know but not everybody's going to be Conor McGregor not everybody's going to be the star all the time there's going to be fighters that's going to be there the whole time whether you know good exciting fighters and I understood like watching my fights I was uh, <clears throat> I had a style like a lot of fighters would have had in the UFC a lot of Russian wrestler guys like the grindy style like uh Looking back at my fights, looking back at my fights now, like I wish I maybe had let go a wee bit more and went for it. But some of the fights were very tough, you know, too. It's very technically tough. And T boy fight was tough. Like the one that I was meant to fight was uh, uh, Masvidal, Jorge Masvidal, I was meant to fight. And then he stepped out and then T boy stepped in. And I knew, like, match, match, match up wise, he was a tougher fight, you know. Um, his style was tougher for me and uh, I says right no problem let's go and uh, he just says Maz Fidel was injured and then I did lose that fight you know watched the fight back yeah it was split decision but T-Boy won the fight two rounds to one in my opinion I watched it and then they went to fight uh, Gilbert Burns <laughs> so it goes from Maz Fidel to Gilbert Burns they fight in Brazil and then Gilbert Burns pulls out and then I fight Trinaldo in short notice And but <clears throat> you got to step in and fight here, but you have to fight, and that's it. Say, never say no to them, because I never did say no to the UFC. I, I, I accept every fight they offered. and um, But the fight against Trinaldo, all the media felt I won the fight. I thought I won it, but it was still close to the call. Whenever you're fighting someone in, in their backyard, it needs to be a wee bit more decisive. And A lot of decisions, the UFC don't like this here. They like good, uh, exciting fights, a lot of action, and like fights been finished they do they like the fights been finished <clears throat> and that's it so I've just went on about my thing after the UFC after we while it took me a wee while to get back on my feet you know never wasn't really interested in fight wasn't even interested in training never even bothered training <laughs> the fight for Andrew Fisher was the first one after the UFC and I barely trained for it I think I trained about I don't know one time a week <laughs> and fought Andrew Fisher on the AC uh, ACB it was in Scotland and uh, I remember Andrew trained like an animal for that fight and he trained the hardest he's ever did and <laughs> Rodney says to him man that was your chance to beat Norman because they barely trained they never even came to the gym I was never in the gym training I was out in the bag hitting the bag in the garage and going running and doing sprints on my own and I did it even a bit too for the Paul Redmond fight I, I, I neglected it I never trained as much thinking oh, I've got to be alright I should beat him and I end up being <laughs> very close it could have went the other way the fight against Paul Redmond in all honesty so 
But then when I went to fight Gamrot after that in the Coliseum, I did train really, really hard for seven weeks it was, all the time, five times a week. And and then it just went on from there, went on that run in KSW. But I never really looked back too much in the past, you know. I, I can see like uh, there's a lot of good fights ahead, a lot of good fights in different promotions ahead. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Have you been back training consistently since then? Or are you, what way are you now? Like oh, the, oh, here, yeah. I can tell you in the last year, in the last year, uh, you know, people think because I fought in them freak fighting organizations that maybe he, oh, Norman's like past it. He doesn't really want to fight professional no more. He wants to just kind of fight these freak fights. And, you know, I've, I trained actually more in the last year than I did all the years prior to that, in all honesty. And, People will say, you know, I'm still, I feel like I've moved to welterweight now, a professional, that's my my category. No way can I fight lightweights, no chance. And uh, I had that problem with the KSW. I wanted to move up in KSW, move up to the next weight category, but they says, no, you're not moving. You either fight or there's no fight at lightweight. So I was forced to stay in that weight where I was missing weight. <laughs> I was missing weight at lightweight. And, uh, but now I'm a 170 fighter. And I think I can be a, a pretty good 170 fighter. I feel so. I can compete with anyone, striking, grappling, no problem. And I feel if they put me into the world, or the rankings and the welterweight in the UK, I believe I'd be right up in the top four for sure, definitely. Is there anyone for you to get back? Maybe you have a f- couple of fights in, in Ireland or in the UK because like, there's a lot of events coming to Ireland this year. Bellator are always mad looking for fighters and I know for a fact PFL are as well. If you had any talks with them, I know like, okay, Bellator have a lot of SPG fighters, but I think they might be looking to get back to maybe, Mar- you know, SPG versus Ireland and <laughs> versus the other gyms in Ireland. Is there any fights there that you'd like to maybe have in a, in a big arena show in Ireland? Possibly, I know the PFL's coming there, and I think they do one fight deals and all too. So they do, but um, maybe in the future. I know this uh, Octagon MMA. Speaking with them, they've got plans too. But um, <clears throat> we'll see. You know, I never look too far ahead, but I know some things I can't say on <laughs> on the chat. Right, <laughs> some things I can't say on the chat, but there is some opportunities that's going to come back to fight in the UK and Ireland also, uh, which I'd love to fight here again, and. Um, but it's good to see the PFL has uh, jumped into the European market. Also, Bellator comes loads of times, uh, I think two times a year now, to to Ireland, uh, Dublin. And the last show they had on there at the weekend was good. I watched it. Good, full crowd, full atmosphere. And uh, But I don't know who for me to fight someone from the south. <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone for me to fight on the SBG. <laughs> what about, uh, Peter Coeli, what about that fight? That'd be a good fight. I know Peter fights in the lightweight division, but I think he can fight welterweight too. But I, there before, I, yeah. I think if I fight Peter, I don't think I would fight him in lightweight. It's just it's silly to have two fighters. I think Peter can fight welterweight anyway too, but I mean, if if, if they were interested to make the fight, I would fight. No, pro- You know I'd fight anyone. I'm undefeated against the SBG. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I'd say that'd be a good fight, I think. But, uh, no, I would fight Peter. Peter's a good yeah. lad, you know. Um, mm. He's fought tough people, you know, and Bellator, he's fought, fought very tough people. And um, watching that fight at the weekend, he looked in control, you know, and then out of, out of the blue comes this elbow from the from the clinch. Like, you never ever see that happen too much. And the elbow's just not like it caught, it caught him clean on the chin and it hurt him and finished him, you know, just rocked him. And then he didn't really know where he was and the, and the guy finished him. But... It looked like he was in control of the fight up until that happened, but that <laughs> goes to show you how this game can go. But hey, I've not tasted that yet. I don't want to taste it soon, but the first the taste I get of a knockout, I'm finished. I, I, I retire from the sport. If I get knocked out completely cold, spark cold, like like <laughs> like a Conor McGregor knockout, <laughs> I'm I'm gone. I'm not fighting again. I'm being serious. The first time I get knocked out, I'm not fighting again. Is that a thing that like you've kind of said yourself or with the family and stuff? Because I know over the last few years, you know, you're your family and all of that and you've had kids and things like that. Is that something because of that or is it something you've always thought? Just something that just thought in my mind, just watching some real good fighters, some fighters you've seen. Like look at, look for instance, um, Rockhold, right? Look at Rockhold, for instance. Look at, uh, who's the guy at the really close fight against John Jones? Uh, Dominic Reyes. Guy. Um, Dominic Reyes. 
Yeah, yeah. Look at him, for instance. Mm -hmm. He was a beast. Looked good, striking. Uh, could take a punch. And once he got knocked out, he's never the same again after it. Never the same. And it was knockout after knockout after knockout. And it's more a mental thing then. And you know, as the saying goes, once your chin goes, that's it. That's what they say. But hey, that's why I always try and work. I know I take a lot of punches in my fights, but I always try and keep my, my chin tucked. You know, I feel like my defense for getting caught a good clean punch is pretty good. And, uh, but hey, you don't know this game's, this game's crazy. You don't know what can happen, but I just says it to myself. If, if I'm ever waking up, looking at the ceiling, going, what happened? And Rodney says, man, you got knocked out, then that's it. I'm finished. So, hmm. last couple of things for me, and Norman, I appreciate I appreciate the time a lot. You mentioned Rodney there, and obviously, you know, fighting uh, up and ulcer. There's, I was looking at the card at the weekend, and there was only, you know, uh, the Bellator card. There was only a couple of Dublin people on it. The rest of them were from all over the country. And obviously, in ulcer at the moment, you have lots of fighters. You used to be the you know the one whole you know representing I suppose everyone. But now you have you know t two champions over in uh, in Cage Warriors with Reese and Paul. You have Joe McCulligan who is the champion as well. You have James Gallagher and many others. Uh, how good is it to see lots of people from your part of the, of the world coming up and, and doing very well in MMA now? And do you feel like you are maybe an inspiration for some of them lads as well? I think they. I think you know them boys that you just mentioned there. They've just grown up just to be you know they've been around the game a long time. Like Reese, for instance, been around the game a long time. A lot of amateur fights and. He's grew into a young, proper pro fighter on good breaker, on a good run, finisher, you know, like what uh, promoters like to see. He's a proper finisher. Kill or be killed, that's the style, you know. Um, and uh, loads of guys, even there's some real good amateur guys coming up. We guy Corey McLaughlin at the minute. He used to train my husband, now he trains in FAI. He's a real good one to watch out for. Um, a couple of young boys from our gym too. Bradley Rice is a real nice chap coming up very good striker working very good on his wrestling you know like many people from this country always want to work on their grappling and their takedown defence becoming very good and I think over the next uh, couple of years you'll get to see a lot more of them young boys shine like that's like the new breed of ones coming up where Reese and them boys used to be they're popping through so as I said you know go do as many amateur fights as you can and get the experience who cares if you lose What? who cares about the amateur record Make all the mistakes you can, uh, and then whenever you're ready to turn professional, then that's it. You're ready to go. You're ready to perform, and uh, I'm hoping over the next few years you'll get to see some of them young lads uh, pop through. All they got to do is just stay consistent, and stay with it, and I believe they'll be there. And last thing for me, I know you mentioned Junior earlier on, obviously your opponent on, on March 11th. Watching that that fight you were talking about, I think it was the O'Meal Brown fight. I was, I was watching it there yeah. yesterday. And, he comes out very quick, doesn't he? And throws a big power. And okay, yeah, he maybe gets a little bit tired. But is that what we can kind of expect? Are you maybe weathering the storm early? Didn't maybe drown in him late? Is that the type of fight you're looking for? I think he's going to, yeah. I think he's probably come out desperate looking. He needs to win. You know, he's going to come out throwing big balls. Why just keep the left hand up tight, you know? Keep the left hand up tight, you know? Just stay on it. Pick my shots, you know, and I want I want to be I want to look good. I don't want to just go out and just brawl and you know brawl and just make it look like a fucking street fight. I want to be nice and technical, nice left punch, take my time, look for openings because I know I can hurt somebody if I punch them. Now I feel like I can hurt them and get their attention. So I'll wait, you know, block his punches. So what if he gets through? When the times just smile at him and say, "Come on," and keep the pressure on them. You know, I like to hand up and the chin down and just pressure. That's my style. Forward pressure, grind them against the case, take them to the ground. And on the ground, you know, I'm not going to just try and stall more. Throw elbows. Be aware. Be aware of the uh, certain things you go for on the ground. You know, because BGJ black belts they'll squirm about a lot, and uh, just control them with good base and pick the shots. Uh, use good MMA grappling and <laughs> finish him. I need to finish him. That's it. My mind just. I say, Rodney, I'm going to finish him. So, and that's it. Well, it been first round, second round, third round. I'll never give up. You know, hey, I'm going to stay on them like an old rash. Just stay on them. <laughs> Lovely, Norman. Thanks hopefully, so hopefully, get the job done uh, within the time. You know, I'll, I think I'll be good for good for my confidence during the fight to finish them and then go to the next one after that. See where we go. Beautiful. Sounds good, Norman. Thanks very much for the time. Best of luck in the, the fight on, on March 11th. I'm sure everyone will be tuning in to watch it. Thank you, man. I'll speak to you soon. Lovely.